it's another overdue wrap up and I can't click. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. How are you all? I hope you're all alive and well. This is my overdue wrap up, but you know, that's fine. That's fine. I read 29 books last month, which feels like a very long time ago now, and that sounds like a lot, but almost all of those were audiobooks because I had no attention span for physical books. So I'm going to start with the lows first because you know get the bad stuff out of the way. So the first book that wasn't that exciting was Journey to the Centre of the Earth by Jules Verne which is like a classic sci-fi novel, adventure story and um, it follows Axel who is narrating it and he has this uncle who is a professor. Professor Otto Le Leiden? What's his name? Liedenbrock, there we go, who has this theory that the centre of the earth is not actually fire and he wants to travel there so they go on this adventure to find what's there. But there was a lot of sciencey talk that wasn't very interesting, there was quite a lot of talking and not enough doing at the beginning, it takes a little while for them to set off to Iceland where they begin their journey of going into the earth and um, it just had potential that wasn't very well realised I felt and um, there's I guess the main thing is there's not many characters and because the characters was mainly Axel and also it, it because they weren't very interesting to me or exciting or varied I just didn't feel very engaged in the book but you know that's fine maybe his other books are better I don't know and then another book that Okay, it wasn't a bad book, it was just a disappointment to me, and that is, oh I'm really sad about this, The Sea the Sea by Iris Murdoch. I still gave this three stars, but I thought this was going to be a five star read. It's about the actor, director, character, Charles Araby, who has retired, all, all kind of, you know, left London, left that theatrical life, bought this damp house by the coast, and is trying to be good and, um, have a you know more solitary life and then he is suddenly reunited with his old true love Hartley among other friends and ex-lovers so while there was some beautiful bits of writing the scenery description um the description of the scene in particular is very beautiful the setting itself is lovely it just felt a little bit repetitive and i felt like it was a little, little bit over long there is a conversation between Charles and Hartley, well really just Charles saying to Hartley, you must come with me, you must, there's nothing else you can do, you've just got to come with me, and that happens a lot. And I got to the point where I was really getting annoyed, and I was just sitting there like, Hartley, for goodness sake, just go with him, or don't, and tell him to go away if you don't want to go with him. This, this is stupid. This is the fifth time that Charles has been harping on at Hartley, please, like, please come with me, and I'm, uh, just, so I, I sort of lost it a bit towards the end, but it was also really entertaining, really funny, and the characters are great, and there's a cracking audio book by Richard E. Grant, but it, it was just not the... Someone texted me, that's rude. It was not the exemplary piece of fiction I thought it was going to be, basically. And this is the one that won the book, and this is meant to be her best, so I was like, oh... Mm. But maybe I'll like it when I, if I reread it, I don't know. But it won't, that won't be for a while. Anyway, the other book I don't have a physical copy of is This Lovely City by Louise Hare, which is a debut novel set in post-war London. So it's the Windrush era and you follow Laurie Matheson, someone like that. And he has two jobs as a as post office, he's a post office man by day and then um, jazz musician by night which sounds great but I just felt like it didn't create a great atmosphere it had again a lot of potential and wasn't fully realized it follows him f making a discovery of f finding a dead black baby or young toddler um, and he is then suspect for this crime and it's Yes, it's about racism, it's also about him falling in love with the girl next door, like literally the girl next door. And I just found it a little bit like soap opery and 
a bit predictable. I think there's definitely potential for writing there. Again, I gave it three stars. I didn't think this was awful, but it just the, the, the problem is that one of my favourite books is Small Island, which is a Windrush story, and that is just a perfect book to me. And I know it isn't fair because they're very different stories in lots of ways, but that is always like the bar I will compare a Windrush narrative to, and it just did not get anywhere near that level of greatness. So it, it's something that's a shame, but I would definitely look, consider reading her books in the future. And then on to the highs! So, actually, I will talk about Springathon first. So, there was a two week readathon where you were encouraged to read nature writing, and I had a cracking time. So, I listened to pretty much all the books <laughs> for that readathon. Um, and one of my favourites was H is for Hawk, which is very beloved here on BookTube. I know a book Olive loves this book, and um, it is by Helen MacDonald and it's a memoir of when her father suddenly passed away and how she was very into falconry and oh I've got an itchy nose, sorry, <laughs> and that as part of her grooming process she decided to buy and train a goshawk which is this you know insane predator, it's like, like a step up from a normal hawk and um, it's fascinating because of how the hawk comes to kind of mirror her temperament that's how that's how she sees it that's why she sort of ha feels some kind of connection to the hawk but then she becomes a complete recluse because it her whole life revolves around caring for this hawk and it's and it's so much about um grief and but about nature and and um and about the difficulty of ownership and like how you can own something like a hawk, you know, you can't control it, that, that it talks about her anxiety when she lets it fly out in the wild and when it starts to not come back as much, that kind of thing, and her not wanting to let it go, like a child almost. And it's really moving and really, really well written. I would highly recommend it. And she reads it in a book, which I love. And then another book that I really enjoyed, which is also a kind of memoir, was Honey Bee Heart Has Five Openings by Helen Dukes. And this is about her being in a point in her life, she's in her 30s, she's struggling to settle into a job in Oxford and she's just tired of being in the rat race essentially. So her friends give her this, this honey hive essentially and she talks about a year of keeping bees. And I, I enjoyed it because she's a complete novice, so she's, she's learning everything, it talks about all the friendships that she makes with the people that are experts on beekeeping and that was just um, lovely about the way that, again, the hive and like learning how to take care of of something, of animals or, or something in part of nature, um, can give back to you and make you happier as well. And it it was just really hot. We're gonna really enjoyed it. And the other book I really enjoyed for Springathon was Underland by Robert McFarlane, who is a really renowned nature writer, very established. And this is literally him looking at the ground but but like it goes from history and and looks at everything from like bronze age burial sites and then goes all the way to the future ending in i want to say denmark but that could be wrong and their great project called onkolo which is a huge um underground bunker i suppose that they're building that they're going to use to store nuclear waste and it's a really long ongoing project it's the kind of thing that will, that will take them you know multiple generations to finish drilling like and all of the space underground that they're going to use to store the, this nuclear waste and it was just so fascinating and, and it does make you really want to travel so that i, I because the, the favorite chapter was when he went to paris and he went to the catacombs underground and oh, someone else texted me. I'm so sorry. I'm not normally this popular. <laughs> and the, there's another bit where he goes to Greenland and he, and he sees the ice cap and oh my god! People, leave me alone! Stop. And there's a bit where he goes to Norway and the, it looks like caves and it's just, it's amazing! And it's so beautifully described. It's very vivid imagery and it was just a really new way of looking at nature writing. I'd never read anything like this before at all, so I would highly, highly recommend that. And the physical books I have to talk about that are highs. The first one is Cranford. These are all classics. I did not plan that, but 
by Elizabeth Gaskell, which is a lovely, really gentle tale. I've not read it before, but I adore BBC series. And I know that there are other short stories about Cranford that aren't in this, but were put in the series. So it was a bit of a different reading experience, but it's a provincial town that's run by women and it's kind of getting left behind. I really enjoyed this because it looks at the idea of the fast paced change in Victoria society and how towns like this were concerned about that and, and were becoming outdated really and um, you know that the women are behind in fashion and things like that but it's narrated by Mary who is going to visit these women in Cranford and it, and it just has all these you know different stories of their lives but I I just adored it it's a wonderful comfort read and it's it's you know it's short I just love Gaskell so that was a joy and then a very different classic. This is Jackie Wanana. Can we take a second for this cover, please? Oh, by Cyprian Equency. That is definitely not pronounced right. I'm so sorry. Who is a Nigerian author. And I read his short story, which is a Penguin Mini Modern, um, The Glittering City, a while ago and loved it. So I'm so glad that, that he's not just one hit wonder with me. This is about a, a, the woman, Jackie Wanana, who is kind of middle aged and she's still very attractive and sexy and all of that but she's she's wanting to kind of secure a future for herself so she's not a prostitute but she's very much open to different opportunities and she's trying to simultaneously hold on to her young boyfriend Freddie and encourage him to get a good job or to go to England and then take her with him but also she's not closing herself off to other people as well so she creates a lot of drama she's very hedonistic in her personality and also trying to see off younger competition for freddie which is there are some really funny scenes about that and also there's really vivid exciting scenes where they go to um the club Tropicana, and that was kind of the atmosphere i wanted when i read the love this lovely city with the jazz oh, obviously this is in england this is in nigeria primarily lagos but still i really felt like i was there it was very immersive and it, it was just a great read and if he's any other books that are published i will really love to read them so highly recommend that and then last i think last oh no wait i forgot a book hold on i'm back okay and then penultimately we have to the lighthouse by virginia wolf which was a cracking read this is a, a bit like mrs dalloway in the sense or at least for the first half of the book in the sense that it's almost in real time it's just talking about one day you follow the ramsey family mrs ramsey is the maternal heart and soul of the family and it's very soon introduced the idea of the title so her children want to go to the lighthouse and take a boat and her father is well, the children's father is very negative about it and saying oh no you won't be able to go tomorrow the weather will be bad and Mrs Ramsey is a positive one saying oh no you will be able to go to the lighthouse so it's partly about if they go to the lighthouse or not and also there's there's a dinner party which is why it reminded me of Mrs Dalloway um, and it is a lot about the dynamics of family and between men and women which I really enjoy but then there's a short spit a bit over halfway where it condenses a lot of years into just a few pages and then the second half skips over a lot more time and covers what happens to the children and all the difficulties in life that ensue and I know it's partly biographical I know that um I think because this is in the Isle of Skye I want to say I know Virginia Woolf went to St Ives in Cornwall every year until her mother died and that is kind of mirrored in this as well so it's just really beautifully written and I, I think Virginia Woolf is wonderful because I know I will reread this and I will get more out of it when I reread it again so yeah I'm happy I read that one and then this is the last one now so this is How's End by E.M. Forster and it was a flipping amazing book I think I enjoy A Room With A View more because it's funnier but I think this is his masterpiece I have not read all of his work but this is I think is his best I've read so far at least and it follows three families so you have Rich Wilcoxes, the kind of upper middle class Schlegels, who are interesting because they are German English, and you have the poorer Bass. So it is all tied together by housing, which is a house which I previously guessed, so that's pleased about that. I was right. Uh -huh. And um, it's a lot to do with class and social conventions, and I think he just does it so well. And yes, I am going to do it. 
Lady Chatter's over again because that was that was like an example where I felt like the way what is his name? D. H. Lawrence. That's it. The way he talked about class was just really clumsy and really laboured, and this was nuanced and fantastic. There's a lot of discussion, especially about the Wilcoxes, about whether or not they should help the Baths because they're poor, whether they should help them get a better position, or whether actually there is a certain order of things and that's not meant to be disrupted. And the Schlegel sisters are brilliant. So you've got Helen and Margaret, and it begins with them. I always love sisters in stories, but you also have, because this is written kind of at the turn of the century, it's set. So, but it's, it was written a few years before the First World War, but so you have this already building anti-German feeling about the sisters. Um, and there's a wonderful scene where they go to a Beethoven concert, well, a music concert, and they, he talks about Beethoven. And I've never heard music described in that way before. He, he describes the whole scene and conjures it out of this classical music piece, and it was just amazing, and I don't think I'll ever... Ex listen to that piece in the same way again. It, it, it was just so wonderfully written and it spans a long time. They get a lot in here <laughs> and um, it's a lot about the history of a place as well and the spirit of a place and how a house can represent so much life and ew, it was just so flipping good. I definitely want to read another one of his soon. So there we go. That was the highs and lows of my reading book and I hope you have had even though it's a long time ago I, th I hope you had a nice may reading month too have you read any of these books let me know we'd love to discuss and i will see you soon on bookish shenanigans bye